York and, rap. Yeah, that New York style. I love it, right? Mm-hmm. And then when you drop, well, when y'all, when Lil Kim comes out with Crush on You, this is like mm-hmm. 96, 97. Mm-hmm. It was musical, like the vibe oh, yeah. was just different. It didn't yeah, yeah. feel, you know, it didn't feel like the other hip hop music. Yeah, it had changed at that point. Um, a lot of sampling was going on at that point. Puffy had taken off, uh, looping a lot of popular records. Sure. I um, when we were doing hip hop, uh, Tribe Called Quest was big at that time, and right. they were into a lot of jazz. Yes, right. So I went like jazz crazy, just like buying a whole catalog of uh, jazz, old jazz albums, mm-hmm. and studying all those uh, musicians that played on those records. Yeah. And I found Jeff Lorber Profusion, mm-hmm. and that was the the sample that we looped up, put the hard drums behind it on the SP twelve hundred. And next thing you know, uh, it went from my bedroom to like touching the world. So tell me about that feeling. Like I know what it's like to be. I know what it's (laughs) like. Not not nowhere near to have a hit like that. But I know what it's like to be a songwriter. Mm -hmm. You writing something. Mm -hmm. You just riding your car. You in your room. Whatever. It's just you in the song. Mm -hmm. And then you performing it. You put it out in the marketplace. And now you got hundreds of people singing it back to you. Like. Tell me, like, that feeling, like, doing that. Now you got the world. Well, the thing about it is I created that record probably, like, two or three years before it came out, and I could not sell that track to nobody. Nobody wow. would buy it. Everybody would pass on it. <laughs> and it just so happened that Biggie uh, heard it and had the foresight to see what it could be. Yeah. And, um, you know, when it came out, uh, like, I think Little C's had called me and told me we got a hit. And, uh, you know, he was the original one that was on her album. It was right. just him by himself. Right. But the record took off so big that uh, Biggie made her go back and get on the record. Ah. She didn't even like the track at first. Wow. But then, hard enough for right. Her. But then after it took <laughs> off, she went back and put her verse on it. And between uh, Biggie being involved with the record, Little Kim on it, Little C's, Cameron writing the record, writing the verses as a ghostwriter. You put all that magic in there, and everybody was at the height of their, you know, their moment. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it just, you know, it just turned out to be an incredible record. And even to this day, like I can be in a party, and I can be in the corner, and nobody knows me nobody in, the, knows. in the room, and just seeing people react to that record still to this day, I Absolutely. know that it was a, a very monumental record for a lot of people in different parts of their lives. Whether it was that summer or, sure. or you were in school and it just set the party off. And even for DJs. So yeah, yeah. Um, it's just a great feeling to now, what, 20, 25 years later, that it still has it's that still, same energy. Absolutely. Yeah. That's amazing.